What's up guys, Dirk here. Happy Saturday. It is the 24th of September today. So let's do a quick update on the markets, especially also on the stock market since the week has closed, that weekly candle has already closed. And I must say it is not looking good. And if the stock markets continue to sell off, it is more than likely that Bitcoin and crypto are going to follow suit and are going to follow that sell off. So it is very important to pay attention what is happening here. So if you're new to the channel, welcome, make sure you subscribe down below, click that notification bell so you don't miss future updates. And if you want to get on my email list so I can just email you whenever I upload a new video so you don't miss any future updates, click the first link in the description down below, get on my email list, and then I can alert you via email every time I upload a new video. So let's start out with the Bitcoin chart. This is the four hourly chart. You can see we're currently at $19,091 as we're trading here today. Now, what's important to note is you can see this level over here, which ended up being the, the fair value gap, the imbalance over here from this move down. We tested it multiple times. And basically the rule in technical analysis is the more times that the price action tests a level, the more likely it is to eventually break that level. Okay, and you can think of that Basically, this is a level where there are buyers stepping in and there's no sellers that can overpower this, the, the buyers, right? That's basically all it works. That's how the charts are created. It's buyers and sellers. When the price goes down, it means there's more sellers than there are buyers. And when the price goes up, it means there's more buyers than there are sellers. So at this point, this level over here, we have been seeing buyers step in and absorb any selling pressure and that is why it's been bouncing every time. So we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times now already where this has been tested. And you can see, even though we had this crazy uh, manipulation scam pump up, it came back down and it tested it and again and again. And you can see we are creating these lower highs over here on the four hour chart. Now, I am about to show you the US stock market charts, which look very, very bad. So if those, like I said, continue to sell off, then it's more than likely that in combination with basically just this rule of testing this so many times, I mean, if that's going to break down, um, we're looking at very likely a breakdown here in Bitcoin and very potentially, you know, within the next one to two weeks, um, just based on how this is looking at this point. If we want to avoid that breakdown, I mean, we're going to look at at least reclaiming this level over here, but very likely we're going to have to reclaim probably about 22.5 or so um, before we can start considering um, a non-breakdown scenario. Now, there is possibility of some sort of scam pump this weekend that tends to happen on weekends because there's less liquidity. It means, you know, the, the institutions that usually work Monday to Friday, you know, it's their weekend and they don't tend to work. So there could be these scam pumps as we've seen before over and over. So maybe there's a possibility they scam pump this up just to take out anyone who's shorting here with stops above these highs. It is a possibility. But like I said, until we clear that and flip that, and ideally until we at least flip this level over here, about 22.5, um, any scam pump could just roll over and we could still see that breakdown because like I've said, the more times price tests a level, the more likely it is to eventually break down because what it's doing in terms of a buyer and seller analysis is every time the sellers push it back down there, the buyers are going to be running out of fuel. They're defending it, right? So they have so much capital. So they're absorbing selling pressure by buying anyone who's selling, right? That's how the market works. So eventually the more times it tests, I mean, the sellers are selling more than the buyers can absorb. And eventually that leads to most of the time a breakdown in this case of testing the support so many times. Okay, so let's switch over to a weekly chart. This is a log scale because it makes it easier to see because I'm zooming far out on the S&P 500. And you can see how similar, I've been making videos about this for the last couple of months, how similar this price action is right now in the stock markets compared to 2008. You can see, I've shown this many times, I will share it again real quick. We've broke down below the 50. We went to the 200 in 2008. We went back to the 50. This was a bear market rally, it got rejected broke below the 200 and then we had the whole major, major 2008 financial crisis and sell off. Okay. So basically this red line is the 200 moving average, simple moving average. The blue is the 50 simple moving average. I use this on all, all my charts. So it's just a very, very simple way of um, finding the direction of the trend and basically breaking down below the 200 puts us in the territory of basically a capitulation and a huge crash or bear market 
in the stock markets. You can see we've had this only this one time. This was a bit of a fake out and continued back up. And all this time we stayed above the 200. Even in March 2020, we had that major sell off with the whole health crisis. It shot below it in quite a decent amount and then pulled back up and continued higher again. The problem is now we have this huge negative divergence um, with the RSI on the weekly chart since 2018. So this whole move up is this negative divergence. And as you know, as I've shown about divergences, they tend to be pretty accurate in terms of reversals. We had a huge one on Bitcoin also with the $69,000 top um, on the weekly chart, and it led to an enormous sell-off as you've seen over the last year. So this bearish divergence here on the weekly chart does not look promising. I don't like to see it. And you can see how similar this price action has been. We broke below the 50, went almost to the 200. Bounce to the 50, rejected, same as in 2008, and we are now virtually back at the 200. We are at the same level as these June lows now in the S&P 500. And breaking below this 200 week moving average and closing below it would open up the door to potentially, you know, a little bit of downside, more like this or like this, but also potentially to a repeat of 2008. And as you know, if you've been following what's been happening in the world, the macroeconomic conditions are not good at all. Interest rates have just been increased another 75 basis points uh, just a few days ago. There's also indication that we will get another two rate hikes this year, um, which is basically just bad for the stock market. Combine that with this massive bearish divergence, combine it with if we break below the 200 week moving average, there is a real chance we get a repeat here of a 2008 style scenario. And it is very critical here that this 200 week moving average holds and that we can bounce from it like we did here or did here. But, you know, based on what's happening in the world, I'm not too sure how that's going to happen because it would need to mean um, some sort of pivot by the Fed, which is obviously not going to happen anytime soon, or some sort of massive stimulus injection, massive cash injection, which is also not happening because we are no longer in quantitative easing. We are quantitative tightening, which means they are removing assets from their balance sheet, which means, you know, all of this, basically to sum up, it means that it's more likely that this is going to break down than not. But we want to see this hold and to get bullish, we really need to flip this 50 week moving average. We need to get back above that. If we can do that, we might see an extended long move to the upside. But until that happens, you know, we're looking at the downside and potentially a repeat here of 2008. Just to show you the Dow Jones industrial average, it is also basically the S&P and the Dow Jones. They are the two most important indices to watch basically as a benchmark for the rest of the, the stock markets. And you can see again also how similar. In fact, here we actually had a weekly close below the 200 week moving average. So it is a little bit further down already than the S&P 500, which I just showed you, which does not yet have that close below the 200 weekly moving average. But you can see, okay, here it was just averted and bounced here. Um, it bounced March 2020 sell off. We went below it quite a fair bit. So it's very, very crucial right now. What is going to happen in the next one to two weeks? Are we good, just going to continue to sell off and, and massively sell off here, which is very much a possibility? Or is something going to happen in some way that it can be saved? Personally, I think that's unlikely. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see. And again, the important thing to watch for a flip to a more bullish sentiment would be a reclaim of the 50 week moving average so of this blue over here. But you can see how similar um, this price action is once again. Same thing. It broke below 50, went to 200, bounced up to 50, got rejected, broke below 200, massive 2008 financial crisis. Same thing here. We broke below the 50, we went to the 200, we bounced to the 50, got rejected. We are now below the 200. We are literally at this point over here. So and basically what is going to happen in the next one to two weeks is critical to determining if we are going to get a repeat of 2008 or if in some way, um, you know, it can be saved. Again, personally, my opinion is it really doesn't look like there is anything that can save this um, at this point in time, based on what I just said about the Fed and the interest rates and the quantitative tightening. That is what's happening right now. And it's just looking more and more like the chance favors breaking down. Now, how far it's going to be, if it's going to be like this, a quick wick below it and recovery, or if it's going to be an extended, you know, another six to 12 months, um, because you can see how long that took from July 2008 till February 2009. That was basically... Um, we can we can say that's about eight or nine months of sell-off. And that is 
a potential, right? That is a potential too. So we have to keep an eye on this. And why I'm showing you this right now is because if this is going to repeat 2008 style crash and we're going to get six to nine months of sell-off in the stock markets with potentially, I can show you over here because it's a log chart. So you can see that was a sell-off of approximately just over 40%, right? If the stock markets are going to sell off 40%, we are very likely looking at Bitcoin and crypto also selling off another 40, 50, maybe 60, 70 percent from this point, which um, if we go back to the Bitcoin chart and here I've got it on weekly, I've got it on log chart over here, which would basically put us at the minimum probably between 10 and 14,000. But if things get really, really bad, it is possible that maybe on a week we go below $10,000 Bitcoin. But again, I would say that once that has happened, we will probably see um, a decent recovery in not a crazy length of time, right? We've seen it over here in 2018. You can see it sold off. It's been about six months over here at the bottom and then went right back up all the way up. So if we do see something like that, I think it would be a really amazing buying opportunity. Again, if you can catch those, imagine it goes to like 10,000 or maybe 8,000 on a wick or something like that, whatever it's going to be, 8,000 to 14,000, somewhere there, we'll have to monitor the lower time frame charts in real time as it happens to be able to get a better read on where that bottom could be. But if you can get that bottom and within six months or eight months, it goes all the way back up and then starts a longer, you know, six to 12 or 18 month bull market once again, eventually, I think the Fed will pivot. I think eventually, you know, the interest rates will come down again and we will get more money injection, money printing. Um, quantitative easing quite potentially and when that happens it's risk on again in the markets the stock markets go up bitcoin goes up cryptocurrencies go up so we are getting to that point but obviously we are now towards the final stages and we have to basically just wait and see how this is going to play out um, in my opinion i think there is more downside coming before the complete low is in but we wait and see in case that does not happen. I mean, nothing is guaranteed in case this is the bottom and we start going up. We wait for that bullish confirmation, which I've said is at least the 200 week moving average over here, which is the red. We reclaim that with a weekly close above it. Things start to look a lot more bullish, which um, if I zoom in over here, I can show you that is currently about 23.5. So 23,500. If we get back above there with a weekly close, things start to look better. And even better is, like I've said already, is on the three-day chart, the 50-week moving average, the blue one over here, if we reclaim that, which is currently also, it's about 24. So 24,000, if we can reclaim that, then things start to look more bullish and we might potentially have a much more extended rally. Until that happens, though, I think the downside is at risk and potentially 10 to 14,000, maybe even sub $10,000 very briefly um, is a possibility. So let's keep an eye on these averages. Let's keep an eye on the stock markets, what happens next week. And that's going to be telling what happens here. Keep in mind though, that if we do get the sell off again, just like it has in the past, that extreme fear, that extreme downside extension, just like we get the extension to the upside and it's unsustainable and it pulls back down to the downside, similar, um, similar deviations from those moving averages happen when it pulls too far to the downside it gets too overextended it becomes too much of a bargain money steps in sellers are exhausted buyers step in and we get a reversal of the trend so that will eventually happen it's just a matter of time and of course it's very important how you play your cards when you get the, the setup because obviously if you can buy those maximum capitalization lows with your risk capital and you're able to sit that out and wait it out for the next bull market and the next euphoria phase, you know, there's huge, huge gains to be made. And that is why I make these videos. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you do want more from me and you want to join my VIP membership, where there's a lot of training about how to read charts like this, how to understand how the price action works, how to understand how crypto works, trading, you can join our Discord chat group where I'm in there every day answering questions and providing updates and insights. Click the second link in the description down below. You will be able to join, sign up. There's 60 day money back guarantee when you sign up. So there's no risk for you when you sign up. And there's a lot of potential upside in terms of what you can learn and the community you get access to and get access to myself personally in the Discord group too. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.